Welcome, everybody. I'm really excited that you're able to join us today, and I value your time very much. I'd like to invite you to become a follower and supporter of the Growing Band Orchid podcast. Now, I'm sure you already listen to the show, and you've got some friends that are listening as well, and we really, really, really appreciate that. So if you keep that up, that'd be awesome. But we've now started growingband.com, which is a new website for us, and there's lots of ways you can interact with us. You can follow us on social media channels, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube by going on growingband.com and clicking on any of those to follow us. You can also find on there now a new merchandise store, which is the Growing Band Director podcast logo and some sayings on lots of different items on there for men and women. And um, there's things from t-shirts and sweatshirts to other clothing and accessories, lots of different options on there with lots of different sizes and colors. Again, a little bit of that money comes back to us at the podcast to help us keep some content going for you. Finally, I'd like to invite you to become a Patreon member. This is a listener-supported show, which means we don't take any ads besides this one. Instead, we rely on listeners like you to keep us going, right? The way to support us um, is by going to growingband.com and clicking on the Patreon banner. And you can choose either $5 a month or $3 a month, and you'll gain access to the episode notes as well as an audio file of every episode we've done. Among other things, this is where you'll find our repertoire list and all the different repertoire podcasts we've done in the past and we'll do in the future. So whether it's by clicking on Patreon, um, following us on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, um, going to the merchandise store on growingband.com and ordering something for yourself or some family or friends, um, and also sharing the show with some other people. We really, really appreciate you being part of the show and please reach out at any point. And uh, there's a way to do that on growingband.com as well on the contact us button. Uh, Anyways, let's get to the show. I hope you enjoy it. Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to the Growing Band Director podcast. My name is Kyle Smith, and joining me is my friend and colleague, Jeff Smith. Our mission is to share practical advice and explore topics that will help every band director, no matter your experience level, as well as music education students who are working to join us in the coming years. Together, we will discuss many aspects of a well-rounded band program, but most importantly, we will discuss concepts that help us all improve our own programs each and every day. Always remember the famous quote by Ray Kroc, when you're green, you're growing, and when you're ripe, you rot. Let's get started. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you heard part one of our grade one series back in July. That was a little while ago. And uh, hopefully you heard that. If you didn't, you should definitely go back and check it out. I think it's episode number 23 or something like that. Uh, I showed you seven or eight great pieces in there that are really real winners at the grade one level. And uh, now we're on to part two of this three-part series. There's just so much great music. So uh, enjoy and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Hey, greetings. Welcome back, everybody, to the Growing Band Director podcast. Um, So this episode is going to be all about grade one music. And uh, for those of you who are younger teachers uh, and this graded music system grading uh, stuff is sort of still pretty new to you. Um, the music is organized um, or graded by difficulty level for our students, right? Um, 0.5 or beginning band being the beginning and then grade six being sort of the highest highest level stuff that there is. Um, but when you're thinking about this number for your students, think about um, in terms of skill set, not number of years playing, right? So it's all about what they can do and what they can't do on the instrument. It's not about what grade they're in. So say you take over a high school program, you know, you might say, oh, they need to play grade three and grade four. Well, if their skill set isn't there, then they shouldn't be playing those grade levels, right? So you really want to find, um, uh, you know, the best, the best fit for your, for your students. Um, definition, since we're doing grade one today, um, here's sort of the, the standard definition for grade one music. Uh, grade one is music usually played by more advanced elementary school students. So this would be fifth grade, sixth grade, you know, depending on your frequency of meeting and all that, even sometimes into seventh grade. Good teachers um, many times have seventh graders play grade one, um, you know, if that's appropriate for that group at that time. Uh, this may include the first full octave of notes on brass instruments, saxophone, and clarinet. I'm sorry, and flute. Um, advanced clarinets may play the entire octave, 
But again, this is where they might, they will probably split into first and second clarinet and keep the clarinet twos below the break, typically. Um, advanced clarinets may play an entire octave. Uh, some parts are doubled, i.e. the bass line in the tuba and the bass clarinet and the berry sax would be doubled. But more parts are now split. So first and second clarinet, first and second trumpet, things like that. Musicians are encouraged to be more independent and not lean on each other as much. And concert B-flat and E-flat key signatures and their relative minor keys are the norm. So that's sort of a standard definition of grade one. And I have a ton of pieces here that, um, to be honest with you, I have not done most of these pieces. I haven't taught a lot of grade one bands. Um, however, I have a bunch of great teachers who've weighed in on this uh, list and who I trust implicitly with their programming. So I hope you get something out of these pieces. And, and remember, even if you're doing a grade three band, or a grade four band, we always have use for grade one, right? So what are some of the uses of grade one? Um, well, first of all, um, you should be sight reading with your kids all the time, right? For me, I, we sight read something every day. It could be eight measures, but we always sight read something every day. And for a full grade one piece, a lot of times, you know, when you go to band festival, at least I know in Maine where I live, we go to band festival and you have to sight read at two grade levels lower than what you're performing at. So if you're doing an average of a grade three, then you need to be sight reading grade one. If you're doing grade four, you have to sight read grade two. Um, so having a number of these grade one pieces to practice sight reading with your kids is really, really important, right? So you need to uh, have a system in place on how you want to do practice that sight reading. Um, so that's not really a topic for today's episode, but I know Jeff, Jeff and I have discussed that in the past and will in the future as well. Always making sure you have a system and you're teaching your kids how to sight read. There's a lot of tricks you can use and a lot of systems you can use, but you need to find something that your kids can latch onto and you can latch onto to really get the best sight reading opportunity for your kids. So even if you're a high school teacher, I'm hoping that a lot of these pieces might uh, make it their way into your library uh, for that sight reading purpose. Also, another great thing is take your local middle school teachers who you love so much and who feed uh, your musical souls, right? They send you all these great students. Um, look for advice from them on great pieces to be using and even borrow from them so that maybe sometimes you don't have to spend your budget on it, but um, you can get a lot of these sorts of pieces. And you know what I found over the years? Kids, meaning even older kids, like playing easier music. I mean, how often is everything they're playing like kind of tough for them? You know, it should be at a good a good level where it's challenging them. Not every piece is challenging them in the same way, of course, but um, for them to sit down and like read a piece that looks so easy to them, they my kids get a total kick out of it. So a lot of times it's a really good change of pace too. So I hope these grade one pieces are useful for for a lot of you, either for performance or for sight reading purposes. Um, I really do feel this is very quality literature and uh, your kids can have great musical experiences through these. So let's dive into them. First piece we're going to listen to is entitled Frogs by Randall Standridge. Um, Randall was on a podcast of ours, I think it was number 11, back a couple months ago. And so if you haven't heard that, you should check it out. He shared a lot of in, uh, interesting music with us and all of his great ideas uh, that we are able to get to in that hour or so. So check that one out if you can go back and check it out. I think it's episode 11. Um, Frogs is uh, a grade one piece. Let's see what he says about it. Um, out of touch of whimsy, enjoy to your next concert with this new young band work. Inspired by the composer's love of Percy Granger, uh, Frogs combined many Grangerisms, unexpected harmonic movement, chromaticism, and a pastoral sensibility with quirky percussion and accessible rhythms and arranges to create a truly unique work for a young band. This inclusion of the frog and optional sound effects adds the final points of a charm to this new work, destined to be a hit with students and audience members alike. The frog guiro, which is needed for this piece, is actually a thing. I had not known about that until I met with him on our podcast. So uh, let's take a listen. Frogs by Randall Standridge. <laughs> Thank you. 
if you search for that piece online, you will come to his website and he does have a, um, you can click, you can download the sound effects to use it as an audio file uh, instead of using the Frog Guero uh, as well. So you go ahead and do that if you're going to do that piece. Such a great piece. Okay, the next piece we're going to listen to is called Ancient Voices, again by Michael Sweeney. Great writer. If you haven't uh, heard of him, you're living under a rock, but he's uh, written for every style, every grade level. Great writer. And this one is no different. It's on the more difficult side of grade one. And um, a lot of local uh, teachers where I live have done this piece. Um, it uh, has some pencil tapping to play with percussion for the woodwinds, I believe. There's a, some singing in there, an optional recorder as well. Uh, the publisher says this is a myst mystical and exciting piece for developing players. Michael Sweeney has included some really creative ideas, including group vocals, an optional recorder section feature, and percussive effects done by wind players. This will be a great hit with your band. So let's see. Let's check it out. Ancient Voices by Michael Sweeney. Again, that was Ancient Voices by Michael Sweeney. 
Next piece we're going to listen to is Ancient Stone Circles by Robert Buckley. This, uh, if you're looking, for, I mean, we're always looking for band pieces with trombone glisses, right? So this, this is one of them. Um, that's the reason to buy the piece right there. Um, let's, let's see, the publisher says about this one, inspired by the mysterious stone formations of Stonehenge, Ancient Stone Circles creates an atmosphere of ancient times using modal melodies, rich scoring, and exotic percussion. You'll hear the huge stones being placed and transported, following a druid procession, and feel the awe and wonderment of this mystical place. So there are lots of percussion parts in here with some variations of sounds as well. Um, so lots to do here and really great at this, at this grade one level. Here's Ancient Stone Circles by Robert Buckley. Okay, the next piece we're going to listen to after Ancient Stone Circles is entitled, what's it called? Oh, yeah, All Ye Young Sailors by the great Pierre LaPlante. And if you've heard any of my podcasts, you know I'm a very big fan of Pierre LaPlante's music. Anywhere from the grade one to the grade three level, he just has some of the finest, finest stuff in my estimation. Um, my wife loves this piece because it's a great intro to 6-8 at a grade one level, and it stays within the octave of B-flat. So... Let's check out All Ye Young Sailors by Pierre Laplante. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I faked you out. Um, before we listen to it, just letting you know, this is sort of a lower quality recording of this one, but uh, it was the best one I could find. And I thought it was really important because it's such a great piece to be able to share it with you. So do keep in mind, this is a younger band that's performing this. And uh, let's take it away. <laughs> Thank you. 
Again, that was All Ye Young Sailors by the great Pierre LaPlante. Huge recommendation from my wife. Um, next one up is kind of a goofy piece. This is entitled Bobbleheads by Richard Saucedo. Uh, if you don't know Dick Saucedo's stuff, he's a retired band director and composer, one of the sort of true legends of our of our field, and took took his many years of teaching experience and, and put it into being a great composer. And let's see. So the biggest thing about pop bobbleheads is it introduces syncopation, and you'll hear that it starts with just the percussion section, adding in in layers. And there's actually a couple times where the kids get to do some choreography where the band actually is, or I should say, are the bobbleheads. So let's check it out. Bobbleheads by Richard Sacedo. Again, that was Bobbleheads by Richard Saucedo. Check that one out. Um, the next piece comes from uh, on high, high esteem from my wife, Crystal Smith, band director at Westbrook Middle School here in Maine. This is entitled Shadows Unleashed by, by Brian Balmages. She says it makes them sound older than they are, and there's an optional piano part as well. She says what's really cool about it is, uh, at least in, in our experience, the kids really dug it, really liked it, and it's contemporary music at the grade one level. So I believe this is more of a grade one and a half. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Here's Shadows Unleashed by Brian Balmages.
well, I think it's pretty clear uh, why the kids like that so much. Again, uh, such a such a great piece of music for that grade level, um, especially when you're looking at contemporary music, which is so so hard to find. So again, that was Shadows Unleashed by Brian Balmages. Next piece is by Robert W. Smith and comes to me um, via one of my good friends, Gene Quinn. And this is called Morpheus. And let's see. So um, he actually has a number of pieces that are from um, the Odyssey, the, the book from Homer, the Odyssey. Um, so he actually mentioned if you do a program, if you do a pyramid concert where you have sort of all your bands on one concert from the uh, younger beginning kids all the way up through the high school, that you could actually program a number of these different pieces all in one um, so that, you know, they see the different levels within one piece. Um, there is a middle school beginning band um, called Apollo Fanfare. Um, this piece is for intermediate middle school band Morpheus. The advanced middle school band is called um, Cronus. And in the high school band, there's a symphony number no. two by Robert W. Smith called The Odyssey, which has four movements to it. So that's his suggestion, and this is from 2004. Um, so I hope you enjoy this piece. Again, this is called Morpheus by Robert W. Smith, and it's super exciting. <laughs> Good old G minor. Uh, there's Morpheus by Robert W. Smith. Uh, again, that tempo block should probably be your strongest percussionist so, since they're sort of the, the timekeeper in the back through a lot of that. Um, again, anytime a, a percussionist has quarter notes, you know, steady throughout, make sure you have a strong player there because we think that quarter notes are kind of easy, uh, simple, but if a student doesn't have steady beat, um, that can go real sideways real quick, as a, a lot of you, I'm sure, know. So, um, hope you enjoyed that piece. Uh, we do have one piece left. Let's see. This is ah uh, one of my favorites. This is uh we're gonna close today by another arrangement by Michael Sweeney of Ye Banks and Brays of Bonnie Dune. Now I'm I'm sure the majority of you listening have performed and know very well Ye Banks and Brays of Bonnie Dune, um, the famous adaption uh, piece by Granger Percy Granger in the early 1900s. But he did actually not compose it. Uh, he used this this piece as the Scottish melody, which is from. Uh, all the way back in 1790, I believe, 1791, somewhere in there. So, um, you know, this is very wit very well written for a young band, and every section gets the melody. Um, and it's originally in 6-8, but I believe for this arrangement, uh, let's check. Yeah, yeah, they do it in 3-4 uh, instead. So, Ye Banks and Brays of Bonnie Dune, arranged by Michael Sweeney. Uh, again, anytime you can do classic band repertoire at a lower level like this, a younger level, and with great arrangements, you are not cheapening the experience. You are improving the experience for these students. So um, look out for more of these in the future as well. You bank some braids, Bonnie Dune, arranged by Michael Sweeney. <laughs>
that piece would work so well on a concert for young students, but also a concert for older students or even community bands. It's just such great music and, and lovely. You know, it could be done as sort of a second piece in a four piece program could also be done uh, as a ballad for younger kids. Again, ballads are, are tricky to do uh, at this age group. So it's anything that's lyrical like this, um, that sort of avoids the, um, you know, intense ballad feel uh, works really, really well. So hope you enjoyed that. And uh, please be on the lookout for um, the third part to this series, which is going to be our last sort of eight pieces or so from grade one. So hope everybody's having a, a great uh, start to your school year and all that. And uh, I'll see you on the other side. We sincerely appreciate you taking your valuable time and listening to the Growing Band Director podcast. Your students are very lucky to have a band director like you. If you have any suggestions for episode topics or think you have an area of expertise to share on a show with us, please reach out. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your band director friends to subscribe as well. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening to The Growing Band Director. See you next week.